now live on YouTube uh, for the first time. Thank you all so very much for joining us here uh, today. Um, my name is uh, Lillian Hogendorn. I am the Digital Access and Open Educational Resources Lead here at eCampus Ontario. I'm so, so excited to have um, so much interest in this webinar. Happy Open Education Week uh, to you all. Let's jump right in since we lost three minutes and we don't have a minute to spare. Um, all right. So a quick amount of housekeeping before we get uh, started. Uh, we are in Zoom webinars. You can use the chat feature to introduce yourself if you switch uh, to all panelists and attendees. Uh, if you have a question or uh, well, if you want to upvote a question, you can use the Q&A feature. Please, please put questions in for myself as well as for um, our other panelists who I'll be introducing very soon as we uh, go through the um, as we go through the uh, the webinar, um, and we will either answer them in the chat or answer them live. We'll have a couple opportunities for questions. Um, and if you have something really, really want to say, we have a big space. You can raise your hand to be unmuted. I am also monitoring the YouTube uh, chat for those of you who are there, and I will try my hardest to uh, answer questions that come in through there as well. Hello, Jin Lee. Um, all right, any other uh, questions? This session is being live streamed. It's gonna be made available on YouTube after, um, and we'll also try to make the Q&A and that chat transcript available as well. So here we go. Um, I'm so excited to see you all uh, joining us. Welcome to You, Me, and H5P, a sneak peek slash a soft launch of eCampus Ontario's new H5P studio for our Ontario educators. We are thrilled that you are here, that you are all interested in H5P. Um, for those of you who have not worked with H5P and are just here, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about what is H5P, what our history is with H5P, and why we decided to pursue this project. Um, after that, I will uh, hand it over to my colleagues at Laurier University Libraries, uh, who will talk about their involvement in this project. We could not have done this without them, and you'll see why soon. And then we'll do the moment you've all been waiting for. We will officially unveil uh, eCampus Ontario H5P Studio, do a live demo, fingers crossed that works well, and uh, get you all on and creating and sharing H5P. All right. So if you don't know what H5P is, H5P is short for HTML5 package. It is a plugin for existing content creation systems, and it allows you to create interactive, rich multimedia content that can be really easily shared and reused. Um, it's an open source project from Jubal, uh, which uh, means that it benefits from a really strong community of people who are invested in the success of this project. So anyone can suggest changes or improvements to H5P, they can contribute code, they can create new content types, um, and those can be reintegrated back into the H5P code base. Um, currently, H5P supports over 40 different types of interactive or media-rich content, as the instance that we're using supports 44 types, um, from single question quizzes, to interactive video, H5P has many, many ways to enhance your teaching and learning. And that is why we are so excited about it here at eCampus Ontario and why a lot of Ontario educators are really excited about this as well. Um, so we have a, a storied couple years of history with H5P. Um, there was a lot of interest in H5P in the province because it doesn't require uh, any coding knowledge, because it has such flexibility. Um, we noticed that our educators were really, really excited about it. Um, and a lot of that early interest was linked to making that interactive multimedia rich content available through an open textbook. As you know, we have a long history with open educational resources. It is open education week. And so our, our history with H5P starts with supporting the uh, integration of the H5P plugin into Pressbooks uh, for education. Uh, so we started uh, to to work with Pressbooks to, to make this feature available to anybody with an EDU instance of Pressbooks. And we also started running sprints uh, to adapt existing books and to add the new H5P content in. And Ontario, you guys were hooked. It was awesome. Um, but interest did not stop there. Uh, H5P was identified by folks working uh, on the Ontario Extend program as a great place to start experimenting with new educational technology. 
uh, in fact, at our annual conference, uh, our test conference, uh, we invited educators from across the province to come and earn their experimenter badge. And what we felt was most suited to earning your experimenter badge was experimenting with H5P. Um, so uh, if anyone was there, and I believe a lot of you were there, um, you'll recall we had H8P enthusiasts from our institutions come co-design and then facilitate a synchronous workshop where 200 educators learned how to use H5P all at once. The energy was intense. It was contagious. It was creative. It was educational. Um, and we made a lot of H5P. We, we also really slowed down press books if you were, you were there um, because people were so enthusiastic and excited. Um, but people who were there were not just open textbook creators. People were wondering, um, what if I don't want to write a textbook? There's still a lot that I can apply from this technology into my teaching and learning. Uh, how can I find H5P content that other people have used? And our wheels started turning. How might you do that? How might we support it outside of open textbooks? At TEST 2019, um, we also launched our first crowdsourcing campaign through Ideascale, which is uh, a, a platform that we were, were testing with at the time to invite folks to contribute ideas for emerging uh, educational technology needs that they saw. Um, because we launched it at TEST, not, it's not surprising that uh, H5P came out on top uh, as an idea that people were really, really excited about. Um, 15 different ideas were submitted, 177 people voted uh, on them, or 177 votes were cast, uh, 95 comments. Um, and H5P seemed like a really easy win for us. We knew that it had a lot of uh, things. It was really applicable in a lot of settings. We knew that um, it was going to be really exciting for educators. We know that there are a lot of educators that are already finding their own ways to use this tool. Um, and so we started to think really seriously about how we might pursue this shared service. So. Um, there were a lot of really great comments from folks that are using H5P. One of the most attractive, attractive features of H5P is the ability to be able to share. So how can we facilitate that sharing? Um, faculty find it really easy to use. We want to make sure that faculty have access to it so that they can use it. Um, and then, um, of course, as is often the case, we have brilliant educators in our province uh, who are way, way ahead of always. Uh, this time, we found some brilliant people at uh, Wilfrid Laurier Library. Um, so Laurier, uh, we, ha we have folks from Laurier that are here today, um, but they did participate in our Idea Scale campaign. Uh, Yasin, who is here with us, uh, commented on Idea Scale. I'm sharing our H5P creator site at uh, WLU. The site allows the easy authoring, cataloging, and sharing of H5P content. It's built to enable content authors to allow open or closed access to their content. That sounds really like what we were going for. Um, and uh, I'm not going to talk about their project. I'm going to make sure that they get the, the chance on the floor to, to talk about their project. Um, so without further ado, I'd really like to introduce you to Joanne, Joanne Alves, who is the Instructional Technology Librarian and Instruction Coordinator but I also believe wears many other hats uh, at Wilfrid Laurier Library. And Yasin Dahi, who's an applications developer who's been at Laurier Library, who's been working with us on this project. So uh, take it away, Yasin and Joanne. Thanks, Lillian. Um, Yasin and I started looking at H5P about a year ago, and there are a whole lot of reasons why we decided to do this. The first and most immediate need for us was that we have about 60 flash-based learning objects on our library website. Um, they're all pretty much videos. Those are really high use, so they get about 25 to 30,000 views a year. And as um, I hope most of you know, flash is a dying technology and, and in the immediate term future, we needed to think about some kind of an alternative to delivering flash. So we wanted something that would give us an HTML5 um, ability to serve videos that way. Also, we found that um, creating all of these learning objects is really time consuming. So to create these videos, um, there's a pretty high learning curve with the, the so learning the software, trying to figure out how to make them effectively, and then they fairly regularly need to be updated. So it's a pretty big time commitment. 
And there's also some skills and, and you know, a high learning curve. So we found that um, only a few people really over the years have done pretty much all of the work on this. This worked okay for us until recently, because in the last few years, Laurier has really had a, a different um, set of priorities. We've moved a lot towards creating new online only degree programs. And for us at the library, since we're a support unit, this has required us to really think a lot about how we can support online students. It means that we need to do a lot of things online that we are used to doing in person. And that means that we can't just rely on a couple of people to do all of that work anymore. We need a lot more people to be able to create more content. But those people haven't got any extra time to do this. And they um, haven't been blessed suddenly with um, all sorts of technical skills to be able to do it. So we were pretty sure that um, going forward with doing mainly videos as our learning objects was not going to work. And we were trying to find something that would make it more accessible for a wider um, a number of people to do that. We also found increasingly as we got more and more of these kinds of learning objects that we have a lot of issues managing and tracking and updating our content. So for some of our learning objects, they might be embedded um, in several different courses on the LMS, for example, and in um, multiple different places on the website. And if we make a change, that um, always meant that we needed to somehow know where those were and go in and do manual updates. So that was really challenging um, and we wanted something that would allow us to be able to do that more easily. So those are the key kinds of issues that we were looking at. And the next slide, Lillian. Um, we'll, um, basically we picked H5P because it helped us solve all of those issues. And a lot of the things we liked about it were things Lillian already mentioned that some of the faculty participating in tests pointed out. Um, the main thing for us was that it solved our immediate play, uh, problem of replacing our flash video content. So we, um, through, a, through H5P, we can serve up our videos with an HTML5 player. And we can also add in interactivity, which is really important for us because we had interactivity in a lot of our flash players. And it's really difficult, obviously, you can't do that in, um, in a lot of other platforms like YouTube. So that was a really big bonus for us. It's also really easy to create content. So you don't have to have technical knowledge. Um, it's really straightforward with a low learning curve and it doesn't take nearly as much time as creating some of our learning objects have in the past. So we're excited about that because we um, know that a lot more people are going to be able to use it and create different kinds of content. We also really loved um, and we're excited about the, the chance to create all sorts of different kinds of learning objects that we haven't had the opportunity to do before. So as Lillian pointed out, there's like 44 different types of content that you can create in H5P, which really um, mostly are quite easy to use and you know, quite appealing for students. So this really expands the options that we have for offering different kinds of content and they're um, all interactive content, which is great for learning. So we're excited about the, the options that we have now for doing different kinds of uh, learning objects for students. We also really uh, liked the fact that H5P is open source and um, has a real focus on open education resources and, and, sh and sharing. So you can easily take entire learning objects or pieces of learning objects um, copy and remix and reuse those to create new content in H5P. So that makes it really easy to, to just do things and tweak them or to share things uh, with different people and customize them. It also though gives us really fairly fine level control over the licensing options, which was also important for us because not everybody is going to want to share everything in the same way. And H5P really allows you to specify at a fairly granular level as well as at the broad level what um, what kinds of permissions you give other people to do with your content. We also are really excited about the options for managing and updating content. So basically the way H5P works is that you create your H5P content on the H5P site, which Lillian's gonna show you later. Um, for our site, um, Yasin will uh, mention that later too. Once you've done that, you can embed it on any website you want to um, and in as many places as you want to, as long as um, the website accepts iframes. After that, whenever you go to do an edit or a change, you do that on the H5P site and it automatically updates all of the different places where you have it embedded. So we would never again have to like go in and make those changes manually. It all happens sort of magically in the background when you make the changes to the H5P site. So H5P really made a lot of sense for us. 
we decided to go forward with that and started to implement it last spring. And Yasin's going to talk a little bit about what that looked like for us. Okay, thanks, Joanne. Uh, first and foremost, I uh, just want to apologize for any audio issues that you may experience while I talk. Uh, if something doesn't come through, please, Lillian, uh, Joanne, just let me know and I can just repeat myself. Having some intermittent uh, internet issues, as is the case when you try to live stream something. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. So I like to just kind of talk about uh, what we built uh, and how we went about building um, our H5P implementation at uh, Laurier. Um, if you want to uh, preview the uh, Laurier's uh, H5P site, you can visit uh, h5p.wlu.ca. Um, uh, you'll have, uh, you know, once you go there, you'll kind of have a, a sense of um, how much of that uh, carried over into uh, H5P Studio, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to unveil very shortly. Uh, but at any rate, I'd just like to talk about some of the key decisions and lessons learned um, through our uh, undertaking of this project. Uh, first and foremost, one of the, the decisions that we had to make early on was whether or not to purchase a solution uh, through h5p.com or to build a custom solution uh, and self-host our h5p solution. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with h5p.com, uh, it should be your first consideration for your h5p project, uh, especially if things like uh, LTI and LMS integration, uh, learning analytics and support are important to you. Um, there is a 30 day free trial. So uh, even if you just want to kind of take a look and see what it's all about, I would recommend uh, uh, taking a look there. Uh, for our project at Laurier, uh, we were, it was very much an exploratory project. Uh, so we're, we were uh, experimenting with H5P. Uh, and at the time, those premium features that are available on H5P.com didn't really, uh, weren't really requirements for us. Uh, so we did uh, decide to uh, roll our own uh, self-hosted solution. Uh, so the other decision that we came to at that point was uh, whether or not to um, build in um, our H5P into an existing Drupal site or to build a new site. Um, so uh, one thing about H5P is that it's very, very simple to install on WordPress or Drupal. Uh, literally within uh, minutes, you can have H5P available on your existing site. Uh, and for some of you, that might be the best fit. Um, uh, in our case, uh, and, and certainly in some of your other, uh, some of your cases, uh, that might not be uh, the best way to approach it. Uh, for us, our uh, existing Drupal site, our existing Drupal library website uh, was a bit outdated uh, and we had planned to uh, redevelop it at some time in the short future. So um, we decided not to build anything on top of an uh, outdated uh, platform, if you will. So given this, we started uh, developing our, uh, our, a custom Drupal 8 site uh, that allowed the La Laurier library to uh, basically create H5P content. Uh, development took roughly about three weeks to build the site itself. Uh, we built a very simple site. Uh, once we get to the demo, I'm sure you guys will see how simple we tried to maintain it. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, transitioning uh, that all that content that had been created previously, all that Adobe, uh, Adobe Captivate content and any other videos that had been created, uh, that took um, roughly three months, three, four months um, to do. Uh, and so be prepared to spend a lot of your time doing exactly that. Um, lastly, I just want to talk quickly about um, uh, building with uh, giving back in mind. Um, it's important to support open source projects like H5P. Um, what I want to talk briefly about is just um, how you might go about doing that and, and how we've attempted to do that at uh, Laurier and uh, with eCampus Ontario. Uh, first, if you're, if you're working with a developer, you might want to have them uh, dedicate some of their time to contribute code uh, documentation uh, or to answer questions in the H5P forums. Uh, this is a very simple way to kind of um, uh, contribute back into H5P. Uh, another simple way is to purchase a, uh, a, subscri ah, a subscription uh, to h5p.com for a small user group. Uh, even if you're rolling your own uh, solution, this would allow you to, at the very minimum, experiment with the premium features uh, to get a sense of um, you know, what you might be missing out on. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, you, know, you might want to consider the, uh, joining the H5P supporter network. 
joining this network has a, comes with a bunch of perks. Uh, it will basically allow your organization to have a say and a vote in the direction and the roadmap that H5P is taking. Uh, so it's a really good way to kind of um, uh, have a voice in, 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 uh, in guiding H5P. Uh, so very briefly, uh, before going to the next slide, I want to talk about just uh, a few ways that we've attempted to uh, contribute back to H5P at Laurier and with eCampus Ontario. Uh, recently, we uh, released a patch for the Drupal 8 H5P module, allowing, uh, um, it's a very simple patch that basically allows uh, displaying the uh, H5P library name or uh, content type name uh, within the site. Uh, Recently, we also uh, started looking at developing our own content types. Uh, I've developed two content types, mainly for, uh, mainly for experimenting with the H5P API, uh, but also to uh, better uh, be prepared to contribute back uh, to H5P in this manner. Uh, lastly, uh, one of the kind of, I guess, soft goals uh, of our H5P project at Laurier was to uh, ultimately, at some point, uh, release it as an open source distribution for Drupal 8. Uh, allowing anybody else to kind of pick it up, install it locally, uh, and extend it to any way that they see fit. Uh, we're still kind of miles away from, from reaching that goal, but uh, it is kind of in the back of our mind to, to build something of that nature. So next slide, please. So just very briefly before handing it back to Lillian so she can do the demo that we're all here to see, I want to talk about uh, the phase one results uh, at Laurier. Uh, so we launched our site officially in, 20, uh, in fall 2019. Uh, we have seven very active authors who have built over 140 uh, H5P learning objects. Um, we're nearing the end of phase one. Uh, so at this point, we're looking at expanding uh, our offering of h5p.wlu.ca into other departments at the at the university, uh, and um, yeah, that's that's where we are at, at this point. So, Lillian, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been putting questions in the chat for uh, Joanne and Yasin. Um, if you have any more questions for Joanne and Yasin, I'll take a, a second. Um, I see there's one open. Uh, right now, are your H are you HIP creators mostly using the HIP.org site and then adding to your Drupal site? Uh, can either of you speak to that? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll attempt to uh, answer it real quickly. Um, so we are not using HIP.org to create um, HIP content, uh, and really uh, nobody should be. HIP.org uh, is a very good place to uh, experiment and to learn about H5P, but it, is, it isn't somewhere where you should be creating content that you're going to then embed into your websites or into your LMS. Uh, hopefully that, that makes sense. The reason for that, just to expand a little bit, is that it's not really, um, they, if you look at their site at HIP.org, they actually say in lots of places that this really is just for you to test it. And it's not meant to be the kind of thing where they support your ongoing content. So they're not making promises that that will be available in the long term, I guess, the way that it would be if you had a local support uh, for H5P. Awesome, thank you. And I think that's a, a really beautiful transition into one of the reasons why uh, we wanted to partner with Laurier uh, to, to, um, to make something a little uh, more stable uh, for Ontario. And Tanya, that's an awesome question and I'm about to answer it. Uh, okay. Um, so introducing eCampus Ontario's H5P studio, our vision for uh, this studio, the doors are now open. Uh, you all can go on and, and try to create an account and make stuff. Um, but hopefully you'll, you'll listen to the, the walkthrough and, and then try to make stuff. Um, so our, our vision is that this studio is going to be a one-stop shop for educators in Ontario to create, share, and discover H5P content. Um, the studio is going to allow you to share your content with the world. It's going to allow you to create a profile of your content or simply just create content that you would like to use in your teaching. Um, this webinar is our official soft launch of this uh, platform. And it's an invitation for you all to join in to start using the platform and to provide us with some feedback. So um, you guys ready to dive in? I'm gonna assume everybody's like, yes, I really am. 
All right. Um, I am just going to open it. Well, I'm going to try to open a new window to uh, do a live demo. And um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, all right. So H5P Studio is available at h5pstudio.ecampusontario.ca. I officially have a window open to share with you. So give me uh, just a quick second to share my screen. All right, and we're live. So uh, you can see um, uh, that we've got uh, a catalog on our, our home page. Um, so the catalog is gonna be publicly available. Or most of the other features that we'll be talking about will only be available to folks with an Ontario uh, uh, institutional email address. So accounts are available to anybody who's using an email that has a domain that's associated with one of our 45 institutions. If you're trying to create an account and you're not able to and you are using your institutional email, just shoot me a quick email at open at ecampusontario.ca because we might have we might have missed that. Um, so uh, we've already caught a couple of glitches with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in. My test author. So. Here we go. So once you're logged in uh, or registered, you'll be able to use this create button to create 44 different types of H5P content using this very simple H5P editor. It looks exactly like what, um, what H5P looks like in WordPress and other Drupal instances on H5P.org. Uh, we have made all 44 content types available. Please keep in mind that um, not all 44 content types are accessible. And on the about page, there is a link to uh, the content type accessibility that you'll be able uh, to, to browse and, and make sure you're creating accessible content if that's something that is a requirement for you. So um, here, here's your little H5P creator. If you've got other content that you've already made, you can upload it. Um, so if you've got content on h5p.org, which is really not for um, hosting content, you can upload it. If you've got it in Pressbooks and you want to share it, you can upload it right here. Or you can create new content um, by just selecting the type of content and going. Um, so uh, the H5P catalog reads uh, some of this metadata as well, uh, where you'll be able to add a license so that you can then, uh, when you're searching, sort by license, by content type, by author, um, by subject, and then also by uh, author supplied keywords. All right. We've also added some additional descriptive information uh, where you can add a descriptive title that might be different from your H5P title. This is the title that will show up in the catalog, um, where you can catalog it with a subject. These subjects are reflected in our open library. So these are the same list of subjects. You can add a couple uh, sentences to describe the objects, why did you make it, what would you use it for? Um, and you can add author supply keywords, uh, either looking for ones that are already in the system, like OER, or by creating your own keywords. Uh, we recognize that the subjects that we use might not be fully inclusive of everything that you're creating. And so you can feel free to add as many tags as you want. Um, we also have a few options. If you're working on something and you're not done, things can take a long time. Uh, a work in progress, uh, you can, you can uh, check that box uh, to let folks know that it's a work in progress. Um, if you want it to show in the catalog, that's how we would publish it to the catalog. And you'll also have a profile um, that you can use uh, to showcase some of your content. It's a great, great question from YouTube. Right now, um, we don't have a way to bulk import content right now from uh, Pressbooks, so it is going to be a little bit of a manual process. <laughs> um, sorry about that. All right. If you forget when you're creating stuff, um, we've got this great tour that you can follow to go through uh, go through the the creation interface. Um, I see a raised hand from Ian, um, would you, Ian, if you'd like, to, would you like to 
throw something into the the chat? All right, I'm going to keep us uh, going through the tour and we'll get to lots of times for questions at the end. Um, all right, uh, so when, um, oh, everybody also has a profile. That's where we're going. Um, so under, uh, you can see the profiles of other logged in users. Um, so here I am and uh, got my little X-Files profile going um, where you can publish the content that you've created uh, for other people to look at. Um, this right now is only available to logged in users of the site to view. Um, so that's something that we would love to hear from you if you would like this to be public or private. Um, so on your profile, uh, you can add a photo, you can add your title and the institution you work at, and you'll have sort of a list of things when they were last updated. Um, and uh, you know, if it's a work in progress or not. Um, logged in users also have access to the dashboard. Um, so this is a dashboard of all of the content that you have created. Um, here I've only got one thing that I've created, uh, but uh, you can see how many times it has been viewed um, total and viewed today. Um, and you also have an experimental, experimental content result uh, feature. So this content result uh, feature is going to show us who's taken this quiz uh, and what their last score was for the quiz. All right. Um, any questions? Uh, just keep throwing them in the chat. Um, and I'll show off a little bit of our, our catalog features here. Um, we've got these filters on the side. If you are in a mobile view, you'll see just a button that says uh, show filter. Um, and again, we're working actively on improving uh, this stuff, but we wanted to get it to you guys to test, to populate, to play with, uh, and experiment um, with. Uh, and so because of that, you'll notice that there is a feedback button at the bottom of basically every page um, where you can go and provide us some feedback on what you like, uh, what, you, what you'd like to see improved. Um, you can send me an email. Again, we this is a community-driven initiative. It's built by members of our community. It was asked for by our community. And we want uh, anything that we do to change it or improve it to also be driven by our, our community as well. Um, so without uh, further ado, um, we have a couple things that we'd like to see you do if you are an Ontario educator. First, we'd love to see you, well, I have to log out to demonstrate this. We'd love to see you register for an account, uh, create your account, select your institution, use your institutional email address and create a new account. Next, we'd love to see you upload any content that you have created elsewhere that you would like to share into the catalog and publish it. I know that we've got at least one educator that has already uh, done that. So thank you, Sarah. Um, and but I'm going to have to remove my X file quiz uh, as it's not super educational. So I um, will have to. Uh, we'll, ho we'll hope that you guys will be uploading content and uh, populating it and sharing. And we would love for you to create new content, um, play around, let us know what features you'd like to see, um, and uh, you know keep playing, keep experimenting with H5P. Um, we're so grateful for all of you for your participation today. And we'll take the last, you know, 10-ish minutes uh, to answer some of the questions that are open. Um, okay, so uh, Jennifer uh, Peters has asked, what's the turnaround time for accounts to be set up? They were set up instantly as long as you have a user account are an email address associated with one of our 45 institutions. So if you're at Seneca, um, you should be able to register an account um, and make that happen pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Um, you'll, you'll get an email that will prompt you to reset your password. Um, it should be basically as fast as your email and update. Um, Paula, the feedback goes to eCampus Ontario. So this is specifically for feedback about uh, H5P, uh, eCampus Ontario's H5P Studio platform. Um, some 
feedback that you might give us is that you'd love to find a way to comment on or talk to the the content uh, the uh, the um the creator of the HYP content. So if that's something you would like, that's something we can consider making available. Uh, so submit it through that feedback form and we'll try to open up feedback more broadly. I am gonna answer that one. Um, have, has Laurier or eCampus Ontario completed a privacy and security review for H5C? Um, that's a really great question. Um, we will definitely uh, need to look into that that further. Um, we know a lot of our institutions are using it. We don't have a lot of concerns, but we also haven't completed a, a full uh, review. Um, I will say that this site is hosted on our own instance of AWS. The content is in Canada. Um, so uh, we're not using H anything from H5C other than our code. Hopefully that answers your question, but I uh, will have to look into it for Dina. Um, Kyle, considerations for people without Ontario institutional email addresses. Um, that's a great question. Right now, um, because of the way we're authenticating users, we're only able to provide accounts to people with Ontario institutional email addresses. Um, we'll definitely have to uh, have to um, we'll have to like figure out if there's a way to to provide accounts uh, to other folks uh, and and sort of how that would comply with both our funding mandate and the trademark of Jubal. So it's a big question, um, but I hear you, Kyle, and we are listening. <laughs> um, answered live. And I see that it, it's, some of you guys have been waiting for some time for your accounts. So as soon as this webinar is over, I'm gonna be investigating uh, that, but just send me an email if uh, you don't get one today. Um, will the interface be available in French? Yes, that is part of our next step. Uh, we don't want to have anything that's not available and is fully bilingual, but um, we really wanted to launch this through Open Education Week. Um, so we're launching our soft launch in English only, um, and we do know that the H5C plugin is available in French, and so uh, French is, is definitely on the roadmap. Okay. Um, oh, there are so many questions, you guys. I'm, I'm so appreciative of that. Um, how long is the license or account active for? Uh, right now, that's an indefinite, in, indefinitely. Uh, we don't have any plans to shut it down. Um, it's not time limited at this point. So uh, you should be able uh, to use it for the for the time being, um, we would give you a lot of heads up if there was going to be any time of shutdown. Um, Jennifer, how does it record the name of the person who takes the quiz? Do they need to be logged into the studio? Yes, they do need to be logged into the studio. Um, so it's only recording uh, logged in users. Again, hyp.com is an awesome uh, software as a service platform that uh, does a really good job of like LTI integration and uh, getting students grades uh, out of H5P quizzes back into your grade book. Um, we're just experimenting with that feature right now. Uh, so right, the dashboard is a proof of concept that it is possible uh, to, to show who's taken your quiz and, and what their results are. Um, but it's and nowhere near perfect and it's, it's not going to record an anonymous user. Lillian, can I just jump in for a second about this yeah, one? Yeah, sure. Um, I noticed that in the, there have been a number of questions around quizzes and integration, for example, into the learning management system and how it records things. And it is possible, as you just said, and as some other people have answered, but it takes extra work. So I... I don't think that the quiz feature within um, H5P, unless your instance, unless you're willing to have your local instance that does that work, or unless um, the eCampus Ontario people can figure that out as a as a future step, would really replace the quiz functionality in your learning management system. For example, um, I like to think of it more as a um, a formative kind of assessment rather than a a summative kind of assessment. So not necessarily something that's going to count towards their grade, but something that's more just testing. Uh, having students test their own knowledge for now. Joanne, that's a great point, uh, Joanne. Um, we don't always um, we don't always 
you know, recommend that H5P be used uh, for summative assessment um, for a variety of reasons. Um, it's, it's a really great tool for creating interactive uh, multimedia rich content um, that sort of changes up the way that you're learning is happening. Um, it's not a replacement for, for quizzing or for, you know, actual grading uh, at this point. And definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, because if you know how to work with HTML5, you can really easily find the answer. So any of your computer science students are easy, easy to game the system. So um, we don't recommend it for, for that right now. Uh, again, the, the SAS service might be a little bit better. Um, but uh, in this instance, create interactive things to engage your learners. That's sort of the promise that we're Yeah, and that's, what we, that's how we've kind of been looking at it. And I think that is where it's the strongest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, got a question from YouTube. Uh, do we still have to check AODA compliance before using content from the eCampus Studio Library or has that been done? Um, we're not vetting uh, content that is published. Uh, you're really e easily able to just click and publish your own content to uh, the, the studio's catalog. So um, again, that would be, it would behoove you to check uh, AODA compliance if that's something that is a requirement for your work. Um, we want to, you know, we're, the reason we're calling it a studio is because it's a place to see what other people are doing that are, you know, works in progress to fully formed ideas. Um, but you know, it's, it's for community, uh, and it's for, for everybody. So, um, we're not policing the content, um, except for, for like any really inappropriate content, uh, that would violate the eCampus Ontario code of conduct. Um, otherwise, um, it would, if you're going to use content you're teaching, it, 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 it's on you guys to check for that AODA compliance. All right. Um, anonymous attendee says, what happens if faculty have institutional emails and then their access is suspended within the institution? Um, can they still access, if so, indefinite storage helps? Can a part-time instructor working with more than one institution, should they create multiple user IDs to access this? Um, that's a complex question, uh, but you guys have great questions. So I'm really, really grateful for how enthusiastic you all are. Um, Right now, we don't have a mechanism to uh, filter out active versus inactive faculty. We're not using um, like single sign-on or anything. Um, so, so long as they don't need their their uh, password, you know, uh, reset. Uh, as long as they have access to the email address, um, th they'll be able to access the site. Uh, if they, you know, if if you're, if, I believe you would just still be able to log on to the site probably not ideal, but um, as long as you have an institutional email address, you can create an account. Uh, and we're not cross-checking that account to see if it's still associated uh, with an institution or not. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, and Nick, I might have missed it, but is it possible to clone an object and adapt it uh, within the... Uh, within the system. Um, yeah, it is able, you're able to press the copy uh, button and paste it. Um, yeah. And yes, there are no checks and balances in place on the email address. However, you do need the email to uh, reset your password. So you, you would need, uh, you would need access to the email address uh, that is associated uh, the inbox to be able to set the password to be able to continuously log in. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I see some questions coming through. I'm going to check, uh, check on YouTube. Everybody is good on YouTube. Um, Sarah says, I can see this being valuable for building a community of practice around the use of this technology and connecting faculty with faculty across the province in specific subject areas. Uh, a great way to adopt or adapt content for uh, for courses. That yeah, that's why we're doing it. Thank you, Sarah, for uh, really being uh, mind melting with us about this. I appreciate that. Um, we've got two more questions. Um, 
do learning objects have a short URL that can be embedded into a document? Uh, yeah, so they, everybody has, um, every learning object has an ID, a learning uh, object ID. So we've got, um, it has an H5P ID, so it'll just be at slash content slash and then the num number ID. Um, so I'll, I'll just drop, you know, this uh, X files related quiz into the chat right now, uh, and you can see it. Um, as well, uh, you can use the embed button to uh, get that iframe in and embed it. Um, and is it possible to collaborate with other users out of the same item at once without sharing to the catalog? We have not investigated synchronous collaboration or, or even asynchronous uh, editing. Um, that would be a really great thing to submit through the feedback button um, that we could consider as a possible feature for this tool as we continue its development. All right, 26 questions have come through the chat. Um, Any any other questions? We'll leave it open. Otherwise, um, we'll do one last plug for the studio and uh, checking it out and continuing to send me emails about things that you want to see and um, ways you want us to improve and adapt and move forward with this. We've got a, uh, okay, two more. Um, do learning objects collect metrics, for example, on quiz questions? Um, yeah, so uh, we collect results, but uh, just results of logged in users and, um, and views. Those are the two metrics that are uh, collected. Again, they're not a great, uh, they're not perfect for for actual quizzing. We would recommend that you you don't use this uh, for summative assessment, just for formative assessment. Um, but uh, you can see how many views you have had overall, and how many views you have had today, uh, as well as the last uh, completed attempt for logged in users. And can content types be themed? Uh, nope. One of the things from um, one of the things from um, from HYP uh, that uh, it does is, is that it just takes on um, the styling of uh, whatever uh, is is in whatever website the plugin is on. So in this case, we've got a pretty bland website, so it's taking on our pretty bland styling. Um, uh, so there's no ability to sort of customize colors, themes, fonts, except for by uploading images or um, depending on the content. Um, type. All right. And Alan says it's likely a small WordPress plugin could be written to auto embed from a URL like how it does with YouTube. Yeah. So, and yeah, there is again a little uh, embed iframe code associated with every uh, object, unless the author has turned that off. And it is up to you as the creator to decide um, how you would like. Uh, how you would like things to be shared. Kim, you've got your uh, you've got your hand raised. Can you throw something in the uh, in the chat or in the in, in the Q and A, or do you want me to? Oh, or you just lowered your hand. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kim. I didn't mean to call you out there. All right. Can you just clarify that logged in users are your community of creators? Just confirming students don't need to log in. I guess I'm a bit confused about quiz metrics for logged in users. Um, thank you, Paula. Um, yeah, students, again, won't need to log in to be able to see the content, um, but you will only be able to get results from a logged in user. Um, so a logged in user is somebody that has the ability to create content using the studio. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, we do have some documentation on the site. So, um, you know, new thing, new products being kind of thrown at you. Um, so um, because we have a new, a new thing being thrown at you, it, it, you know, you forget something, um, we're going to record this, this is recorded, we're going to put it online, uh, but you can follow the about or getting started to uh, find more information 
Um, and again, if you are using an iframe to embed um, in your LMS or on a course site, um, you, uh, your, your users won't, your students won't need to be logged in. You just won't be able to see a result for an anonymous user. Uh, yeah, a work in progress object can be used for testing by a student. As long as you have the URL, you can send the student to that URL or to the embed. And Nick, thank you for flagging that issue about Blackboard. I was not uh, aware, I'm not super, super familiar uh, with all of the LMSs. So um, if iframes are no longer allowed for security reasons in um, Blackboard, so we'll investigate um, that. You can always point out to the site, although I understand that that's uh, not I ideal. All right. Okay, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you can use the feedback form. You can email me at open at ecampusontario.ca. Uh, you can uh, go on the OOLN Ontario Open Library Network Slack. There is a channel for H5P related questions that we will be monitoring. Um, you can email uh, me if you have questions and if I can't answer them, I will forward them to Yassine and Joanne who can um, maybe or if no one can answer them, we will try to find your answer for you. Again, we're so, so grateful to have a community of enthusiastic folks who will take um, time out of their day to, to be here with us and to have lunch with us and to, to see us try something new. Um, happy Open Education Week, everybody. Um, oh, Yassine says you can connect with Laurier on Twitter or with him on Twitter. If you have any questions, you can also collect, connect with us at eCampus Ontario or at Open Library ON, or at my Twitter account, if you really, really want. Um, there's so many ways to contact us. Uh, if you have a question, it will find us, we will answer it, and uh, we will find you. Um, so share, create, play around, let us know what you like, let us know what you'd like to see changed. Um, we're really looking forward to, uh, to seeing how this works and um, to continuing to experiment with new educational technologies. All right. Take care, everybody.